You know, in the movies, they always show the exorcist going in. <laughs> the dynamic is the exact opposite. When an experienced exorcist steps into the room with another de with a demon, the demon is scared to death. And the reason he's scared to death is because there's a 500-pound gorilla standing behind the priest, and that gorilla's name is Christ, who's about to beat him so badly that he will get to the point where his threshold of pain is so bad he will simply shut down and can't function. He knows that's what's coming. One time during one of my conferences, someone asked me, how many people have you liberated? I said, none. I haven't liberated anybody. No, Christ liberated lots of people in my presence. But I haven't liberated anyone because I don't have the power to liberate anybody. Only Jesus Christ acting through me, through the exorcist, or through you, can he liberate you or people in your family or what have you. The point being is, is this, is that it's, we are useless and it's only when we act, let Christ act through us. One time during one of the sessions that I had, this woman was possessed by a demon of fear. And what Christ was asking from all of us, we found out, is that everybody work on humility. And so at a certain point, I got the demon manifested and I was making him say the litany of humility. At a certain point, about a third of the way through, the thought, I, I think it was a grace, I'm going to chalk it up to a grace, came into my mind, get out of the way. And I got this distinct impression, it was Christ telling me, it's not your place to draw people to you. Your job is to draw people to me and to stand out of the way. And that's when I began to realize, and when the demons would say, you know, you can't make me do this. No, but he can. When you say he can, which by the way, it's kind of interesting because demons, if you just say he can, they know what that means. It means he refers to God. If you say she can, it refers to Our Lady. So they can make you do it. I can't make you do it. But that tells you even in your own spiritual warfare, you have to realize that you have to get out of the way, let Christ work for you, work on the humility, and then you will be very powerful in relationship to cleaning up the demons in your own lives and the lives of your family. Once the demon looked at me and he's, in relationship to Our Lady, he said, her power is in her humility. Now think about what that means. That means this. It means that when we are proud, we're weak. Why are we weak? Because we take control. Whereas when we're humble, we let Christ operate through us, and he has infinite power. He's omnipotent. And therefore can accomplish anything. And so it's through the humility it's her humility that made Our Lady so powerful in the end. It's even her humility now that makes her that perfect instrument of her son. The perfect instrument. The perfect instrument is the one who it, the instrument does or the tool does exactly what you want it to do when you want it to do it. And that's what Our Lady was and still is. She always does God's will whenever and in the manner that he so determines and puts herself per aside and never, ever counted the personal cost, ever. But that should give us the courage to recognize that when it comes to our own spiritual battles, Christ is standing behind us as long as we are standing with him. So what does that mean? Christ actually said to the apostles, actually it was the disciples, when they came back, they said to him, they were all joyful, and they said that the, uh, even the demons obeyed us in your name. And he said to them, he said, count not the fact that the demons were subject to you, don't be glad for that reason. Be glad rather that your names are written in heaven. What does that mean? It means that the more intense the person's spiritual warfare is in their life, the, it's actually a greater sign of predestination if they cooperate with Christ through that process. But then Christ also said, count yourself as useless instruments. Useless. 
If there's a demon that God allows into your life and he brings you to a level of spiritual warfare, don't cower from it. Just ask Christ, Christ, make me strong. Give me the willingness to suffer. Keep me humble. And then help me to keep the course. And if you do those four things, ask for those four things, you will keep the course. You will attain that crown of glory that St. Paul talks about. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sanctus Super Vos et Maniat Semper. Amen. As you can see, Father Chad is very wise. I hope his explanation of exorcism made more sense for you, that it's not the priest, but Jesus Christ who exorcises the demon. And this concept can be applied to our own life. When we get out of the way and let Jesus work, he can do amazing things. And by doing that, we really live out Galatians 2.20, that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's a great temptation to be like, oh yeah, all this hard work that I did paid off. But I've seen in my own life many times the great grace that comes from giving the glory to God. You know, in the last couple of months, there have been amazing things going on with my family and this YouTube channel. And I could totally let it all get to my head, but I realized that it's not me. It's the grace of God that is sufficient, that's sustaining me through this. So I challenge you and hope that you will do the same in your own lives. Maybe you've worked really hard for what you have, but give thanks to God. Let him work through you. And when people praise you, say, this is all, all the grace of God, because really that's all it is. Without him, we can do nothing, as scripture says. Hope you have a blessed day and God love you.